Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Jason's Story Time. Now, as per request, I'm going to do Rapunzel. When I say I'm going to do Rapunzel, I mean I'm going to tell the story of Rapunzel. And it's by the Grimm Brothers in 1886. Um, I've checked, it says it's in uh, the public domain. English translation by Margaret Hunt, illustrations by Walter Crane. 1886, so that's over 15 years ago. So it's not a long story, so, um, but I'm going to read it anyway. So, yeah, here we go. And there's been quite a few different versions. I think Tangled wasn't that a, a Disney version of the Rapunzel book. And the Brothers Grimm, I think they were German. Not that that really means anything, I'm just sort of saying that. Because it's actually germanstories.vcu.edu. That's the website I'm reading off. So, here we go. There was once a man and a woman who had long, in vain, wished for a child. It's going to be chilly in here. At length, the women, the women or the woman, hoped that God was about to grant her desire. These people had a little window at the back of their house. From, it's a bit of a random change, isn't it? They desired to have a child. They hoped God would grant their desire. And they had a little window in the back of the house. It just seemed to be a bit of a jump from a uh, topic. Anyway, these people had a little window at the back of their house from which a, pl- a splendid garden could be seen, which was full of the most beautiful flowers and herbs. It was, however, surrounded by a high wall, and no one dared to go into it because it belonged to an enchantress who had great power and was dreaded all by all the world. So, so I guess that is leading into the story, isn't it? Because I'm guessing the Enchantress is going to be part of this particular story. So that's why I was looking through a window. That's something that you can't have. Can't belong because it doesn't belong to you is what they're doing in a sense. They're looking through that window of the garden, and they're, they're not allowed in the garden, just like they 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 want a baby, but they they can't seem to have a baby because he's shooting blanks. One day, the woman was standing by his window. The woman. Oh, this window, not his window. Um, uh, One day, the woman was standing by this window and looking down into the garden when she saw a bed which was planted with the most beautiful rampion. I'll just have a duvet on my bed. What's What's a rampion? Sounds good, doesn't it? Planted with the most beautiful, beautiful rampion. Rapunzel. Okay. 
and it looked so fresh and green that she longed for it. She just really wanted stuff that she didn't have, didn't she? No? Doesn't seem to sound like a very satisfied person to me. What about like, you know, appreciating what you do have? No, I want that, I want that, because I can't have it. They've got it, so I want it. But I shouldn't judge. And I had the greatest desire to eat some. This desire increased every day. And then she knew that she could not get any of it. Couldn't get any. She, uh, she quite pined away. And began to look pale and miserable. Okay. So... She's looking into a garden, sees something she wants to eat. Because she's not allowed to. She starts to get ill. I mean, that's... She needs counselling. Some kind of psychological intervention, I, I would say. But. Andre, can you be quiet, please? Daddy's trying to read a bedtime story. Hard to get any kind of peace around here. Wish I had a garden with some rampion in it, <laughs> some Rapunzel rampion, whatever that is. Anyway, then her husband was alarmed and asked, "Andre, would you shut up?" That's not what the husband said. Um. Andre isn't part of this story, but he is trying to be. He was fast asleep when I started reading this. Seriously, fast asleep. Again, as soon as I start talking into the microphone, his ears perk up and he has to run around and cause havoc. Again, this is not what her husband said. So he said to her, um, and he was suddenly alarmed and he asked I'm guessing he held his hands up in a kind of an alarmed expression on his face whatever that would be maybe he looked up maybe his eyes were wide maybe he had a little bit of a dribble I don't know not everyone that's alarmed dribbles but I'm just and I don't mean dribbling as in baseball baseball? basketball? What ails you, dear wife? He said. A thing that no one's ever said to anybody ever. What ails you, dear wife? When was this written? Ah, she replied. If I can't eat some of the rampion, which is in the garden behind our house, I shall die. Her husband said, and if that bloody ferret doesn't shut up, someone else is going to die. And she said, But dear husband, what are you talking about? He said, I, dear wife, are talking about Andre the ferret, who won't shut up. Whilst I'm trying to read this story. Because he wants attention all the time. Like a little, little baby. <coughs> like a little, little baby. Like a little baby, Andre. <coughs> Let me get you a pram. Anyway. Um... Yeah, she said, I should die if I don't have some of that from the garden. The man who loved her thought, sooner than let his wife die, bring her some of the rampion himself. Let it cost what it will. See, that, that's, that's romance, isn't it? You know, living next door to some witch that 
could turn you into a prince or whatever, like or a Glockenspiel. It's like, no, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it because I love my wife. So um, I'm thinking about it really though, because it's not realistic, is it? I think it sounds like she probably had a spell put on her, which is why she wanted she she wanted this thing so much. Anyway, the man who loved her thought, eh. so at twilight, he clambered down over the wall into the garden of the Enchantress, hastily clutched a handful of rampion and took it to his wife. Again, you may want to Google rampion. I can't be bothered. Should I look it up? Let's have a look it up. I've got a thesaurus on there somewhere. Thesaurus, where's my thesaurus? Dictionary. Rampion. Rampion. R-A-M-P-I-O-N. Okay. No such word exists. No such word exists. Brilliant. That's great. Thank, thanks a lot. So I've got no idea what it is. Um, so he took it to his wife, the non-existent plant. She at once made herself a salad of it. We're getting a little bit closer to what it is. I'm guessing it's some kind of green vegetable kind of salady. Well, clearly, because she's making a salad of it. Maybe like parsley or lettuce, possibly, that kind of thing. So she at once made herself a salad of it and ate it greedily. They're not really painting a nice picture of her, are they? I think greedy is the real kind of word connected to her. Greedy, wants what everyone else has. Not satisfied with what she's got herself. So not greed. Not very greedy. I don't think it's fair. You know why? We're only like a little bit into it. Yet she's being tarred with this brush. Of greed. She might be a really lovely person. I'm a little bit upset. Anyway. It tasted... It tasted so good to her, so very good, that the next day she longed for it three times as much as before. Yeah, she is a bit of a pig. I mean, that's, that's greed, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, so she wanted it, longed for it three times as much as before. If he was to have any... Oh, this is a bit sexist. If he was to have any rest, her husband must once more descend into the garden. If he must have any rest. Before he was doing it because he loved her. Now he's just doing it to shut her up. Oh, dear. Marriage guidance counselling, I'm thinking. Anyway, in the gloom of evening, therefore, he let himself down again. I think we've got to use that in a different term. He did let himself down again by stealing. It's no justification. It's just wrong. He shouldn't have been doing it. Stealing off a neighbour. Why didn't he just go around and say, Oi... Hello, we're your neighbours. We've been living next next door to you for 73 years. And as well we can, uh, we're making a salad. And um, perhaps you'd like to come and have a salad with us. Perhaps bring some of that. Oh, we've got everything, but we don't have any rampion. I suppose you can bring some rampion with you. Yeah, just enough to last for three months. Mm, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um... We'll make some cakes. Anyway, 
So he let himself down again. Yeah, he definitely did let himself down. But when he had clampered down the wall, he was, he was terribly afraid. Ooh. For he saw the enchantress standing before him. How dare you? Oh, God, so actually going, how can you dare? She said, or well, said she, a little bit back to front there, said she with angry look. Not with an angry look, just with angry look. Descend into my garden and steal my rampion like a thief. You shall suffer for it. I kind of, I see a point though, don't you? I do see her point. Not big on the way she talks. No. I mean, she sounds lovely. I'm just saying the, the way she talks. How can you dare? Instead of how dare you. I used to hear that a lot when I was a kid. How dare you? Do you mean how dare I? Are you, are you, are you the queen? Are you the royal family? How dare I? How dare I? What, be an equal human being? You're five, he used to say to me. You're five years old. Do what you're told. <laughs> anyway. And uh, I said, she said, Hey, send into my garden and steal my rampion like a thief. You shall suffer for it. Oh, answered he. Let mercy take the place of justice. I only made up my mind to do it out of necessity. My wife saw your rampion from the garden, from the window rather, and felt such a longing for it that she would have died if she had not got some to eat. Then the enchantress allowed her anger to be softened and said to him, if the case be as you say, I will allow you to take away with you as much rampion as you will. Only I will make one condition. You must give me the child which your wife will bring into the world. It shall be well treated and I will care for it like a mother. The man in his terror consented to everything. He just wanted to get out of there, didn't he, really? I mean, shooting blanks anyway, so he probably figured, well, <laughs> yeah, right then. And when the woman was brought to bed, what? This is moving quickly as well. He's still in the garden, and suddenly, when the woman was brought to bed, and the man in his terror consented to everything, and when the woman was brought to bed, the enchantress appeared at once, gave the child the name of Rapunzel, and took it away with her. So in one sentence, he's terrified. He says, okay... And then the baby's born. Named Rapunzel and is taken away in one sentence. I do think they could have extended it a little bit. I mean, if this had been my one of my essays at college. That one sentence would have made up about 2,000 words. I would have padded it out like a marshmallow. Seriously. Uh, okay. Rapunzel grew into the most beautiful child under the sun. When she was 12 years old, she already she gave birth to her 15th child. No. When she was 12 years old, the enchantress shut her into a tower 
which lay in a forest and had either neither stairs nor door or neither stairs nor door but quite at the top but quite but I think it's supposed to be quiet at the top oh but quite at the top is a little window when the enchantress wanted to go in she placed herself beneath it and cried Rapunzel Rapunzel let down your hair Rapunzel had magnificent long hair fine as spun gold and when she heard the voice of the enchantress she unfastened her braided tresses, wound them round one of the hooks of the window above. Excuse me a minute. Andre, do you have to do that right now? For those of you that don't realise, Andre's a ferret and has decided to start date night early with my old slipper I'll try and let's just forget that though. let's move on with this what go away Andre go away okay so she had long hair so when she was 12 years old she must have had that long hair already by the age of 12 Otherwise, how would the Enchantress have got up there? Hmm. I mean, would hair... I used to grow... I had my hair grown when I was about... Started growing it when I was about 20. And it took about... Yeah. It took well over a year, maybe two years, before it was halfway down my, my back. I'm going to do the same again, just to annoy people. Oh, I just don't know. I mean, you think she's up there, she's not having a haircut. Because you do have to have the ends cut off, don't you? The split ends so that it grows, continues to grow, otherwise it won't. Uh, anyway. And anyway, she she at least to lower her hair down, and the hair fell twenty l's down. Twenty l's, wow, that's a long way, isn't it? I've no idea. What's twenty? What's one l? Anyone? Right in and. You won't win a prize, but you'll you just feel good about yourself. Anyway, the enchantress climbed up by it, by her hair. See, that was a longer sentence. And all they covered was that she had long hair. And uh, the enchantress would climb up. But the other shorter sentence went through like a year or nine months of time like zip right through it oh. after a year or two it came to pass that the king's son rode through the forest and passed by the tower he then heard a song which was so charming, excuse me, which was so charming that he stood still and listened. This was Rapunzel. Yeah, we kind of figured that out. And what, what, what do we think? Oh, wonder where he is. Wonder, wonder who he's hearing sing. He's past a, he's past a tower. 
Wow, I wonder whose tail that is. It's Rapunzel's tail. We knew that. Why did... This was Rapunzel, who in her solitude passed her time in letting her sweet voice resound. It's another way of saying she'd sing. The king's son wanted... Why don't I just call him a prince? The king's son wanted to climb up to her and looked for the door of the tower. How did the enchantress get her up there? To start with, I mean, originally. Or did they build a tower like along the ground and then just push it up? Stick her in the top and then push it up? I don't know. Doesn't go into enough detail. And... Yeah, so he was looking for a door for the tower, but none was to be found. He rode home, but the singing, he gave up quite quickly, but the singing had so deeply touched his heart that every day he went out into the forest and listened to it. Once, when he was thus standing behind a tree, he saw that an enchantress came there and he heard how she cried. First of all, what was he doing standing behind the tree? I think we all know. He was doing a wee wee against the tree tree. Let's so hope that's what he was doing. And how she cried. And she cried. Oh, Rapunzel. Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel let down the braids of her hair, and the enchantress climbed up to her. If that is a ladder by which one mounts, I too will try my fortune, he said. And the next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Immediately the hair fell down and and the king's son climbed up. At first Rapunzel was terribly frightened when a man, such as her eyes had never yet beheld, came over her, or came to her. But the king's son began to talk to her quite like a friend, and told her, he told her that his heart had been so stirred that it had let him have no rest, and that he had been forced to see her. Then Rapunzel lost her fear, just slipped away, and when he asked her if she would take him for her husband, wow, this is moving quick again, isn't it? He, uh, when he asked her if she would take him for her husband and she saw that he was young and handsome she thought he will love me more than old Dame Goffle does old Dame Goffle and she said yes and laid her hands in his He said to her, who's old Dame Goffle? She says, I'm not sure, it's just part of the, the story. Yeah, but who is it? She said, I don't know it. Is it the Enchantress? She looked at him and said, look, some things don't need to be said. And he looked at her and said, yeah, but some things do. And can you please tell me? He 
sitten ne. She said, I will willingly go with you, but I do not know how to get down. Bring with you a skein of silk every time that you come, and I will weave a ladder with it. And when that is ready, I will descend, and you will take me on your horse. They agreed that until that time, he should come to her every evening, for the old woman came by day. Right, and the enchantress remarked nothing at this. Until once Rapunzel said to her, Tell me, Dame, oh, is Dame Gruffle, tell me. You should have just waited. I don't know why you're so impatient. Why can't you just wait for it to, you know, trying to read the story? Why do you need to butt in all the time? Just, just let me read it. Thank you. I'm trying to offer a service here. I'm trying to help you to sleep. But he's like, you dang Gruffle in. Just, just let me just get on with it. Okay, thanks. Don't mean to be rude, I'm just saying. Tell me, Dame Gruffle, Gruffle, how it happens that you are so much heavier for me to draw up than the young king's son. He is with me in a moment. Really? Is that what she said? Not great at keeping a secret, was she? Wow. Aha! You wicked child! cried the enchantress. What do I hear you say? I thought I had separated you from all the world, and yet you have deceived me. In her anger, she clutched Rapunzel's beautiful tresses, wrapped them twice round her left hand, seized a pair of scissors with the right, and snip-snap they were cut off. And the lovely braids lay on the floor, and she was so pitiless that she took poor Rapunzel into a desert where she had to live in great grief and misery. It was lucky there was a desert nearby, really, wasn't there? I mean, what's the chances? On the same day that she cast out Rapunzel, however, the enchantress fastened the braids of hair which she had cut off to the hook of the window and when the king's son came and cried Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair she let the hair down the king's son ascended But instead of finding his dearest Rapunzel, he found the Enchantress, who gazed at him with wicked and venomous looks. Aha! she cried mockingly. You would fetch your dearest, but the beautiful bird sits no longer singing in the nest. The cat has got it, and will scratch out your eyes as well. Rapunzel is lost to you. You would never see her again. The king's son said, That's okay, I prefer you. What are you doing tonight? Do you want to come out for a pizza? No, he didn't, he didn't say that. This, the king's son was beside himself with pain and in his despair he leapt down from the tower he escaped with his life but the thorns into which he fell pierced his eyes then he wandered quite blind about the forest ate nothing but roots 
and berries, and did nought but lament and weep over the loss of his dearest wife. They weren't married, were they? They weren't married, but they did. They didn't get married. You know, they wanted to, but they weren't actually married. I used to work with someone that every two seconds, my fiance, my fiance. Like just, just call him by his name, my fiance, Clive, my fiance. It doesn't mean anything to anyone else, only to you. My fiance. Is it the same for men as wasn't it? My fiance. Yeah. My betrothed. My betrothed. Betrothed. Behold. Behead. Not beheaded. Betrothed. Betrothed. Anyway. Um, thus he roamed about in misery for some years, and at length came to the desert where Rapunzel, with the twins to which he had given birth, what? Really? A boy and a girl lived in wretchedness. Right, so now she's given birth to twins. They missed that bit out in the story, didn't they? Um, he heard a voice, and it seemed so familiar to him that he went towards it. And when he approached, Rapunzel knew him and fell on his neck and he died instantly. No, and he wept. Fell on, on his neck. It's a bit weird. But we're actually like a cuddle or a hug. You haven't got to fall on someone's neck. Let's go over the top. Yeah, I suppose two wrestlers maybe do that if they fall in love. How did you know you loved each other? Well, he, he, he chucked himself on my neck. Yeah, broke my spine and I knew it was true love. And um, two of her tears wetted his eyes and they grew clear again. And he could see with them as before. And he saw how old she had become. <laughs> and he ran her, he ran away screaming. No, and um, <laughs> oh dear. And he could see with them as before. He led the, he led her to his kingdom, where he was joyfully received. No one had bothered looking for him. He noticed that. He's the king's son. No one went out looking for him. No search parties. For years. Does that... Uh, uh, uh. I mean, if it was Prince Andrew, I'd understand. But, you know, it's... <sighs> he led her to his kingdom where he was joyfully received. And they lived for a long time afterwards, happy and contented. Oh. Doesn't say happy ever after though, does it? It's almost opening the possibility of a divorce. I don't know about you, just... Mm. So that was... Um, what was it called? Rapunzel. By the Grimm brothers. So. And yeah. I think they skipped through quite a lot. Quite quickly. But uh, the outline of the story. Is there is that. I, I can see why. It's been embellished. And you know. You could turn it into a. Like a cartoon movie. Disney thing. Because. And I guess really pictures, because there's no pictures of this. Didn't really get an idea what she looked like. 
I guess she had long hair, but it's like saying he had big feet. You know, it doesn't doesn't really give you an outline. Oh, there is one picture. Yeah. I found it weird that, you know, he said, will you marry me? Be my wife. And then she, she looked upon him and saw how handsome he was. So what, for the first half an hour, she had her eyes closed or was she just looking the other way? I don't know. There's so much missing from my brain. So thank you very much. That's the end of the Rapunzel. So I'm going to go. I hope this was sleepy, sleepy, nice and sleepy for you. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Isn't it weird now that I've come to the end, Andre is quiet. Bless him.